From 1890 to 1920, a new conversation about the behaviors of women evolved from the 19th century fanaticism with the woman question. Along with the push for women's rights came an alternative understanding about women's role and function within society. During the progressive era, this transformation of gender was discussed through the archetype of the new woman. The new woman was a term used in the popular press to discuss how modern women were living differently from women in the Victorian era. On the surface, the new woman was characterized as young, well-educated, career-driven, and independent, and she was active in business, politics, college, sports, and the workplace. The new woman's identity and influence on American life sparked a zealous and anxious debate about a new definition of womanhood. As a result, this debate was a significant function in the advancement of feminism because it called into question the traditional ideas about womanhood. In learning about the first wave of the feminist movement, I wanted to further understand how arguments were constructed within progressive era conversations about womanhood. To do so, I researched articles from the popular press dating from 1890 to 1920 that included the phrase new woman, and I examined how the rhetorical appeals and strategies were used by writers in this debate over the proper role of women. So, in my project, I set out to rhetorically analyze the debate about the new woman as conducted in the popular press in the United States. But in the field of feminist rhetoric, scholars do not typically study female stereotypes and simply accept the stereotypes as contextual information. In my project, I intend to add to our understanding of past rhetorical practices by analyzing how the stereotype of the new woman was constructed in the popular press. In terms of methods, I used online archival research to locate over 30 texts published in popular publications like North American Review, Maine Farmer, and Life Magazine between 1890 and 1920. In addition, I studied secondary sources to supplement my primary source analysis. I then read the articles to identify patterns amongst the arguments, namely the negative connotation of the term new woman and words like mannish that were used to describe the new woman. I then supplemented my textual analysis with an analysis of the visual representation of the new woman and how these visual representations compared to the textual representation of the new woman. In doing such, I argued that the term new woman functioned as a stereotype of the modern woman in the popular press used to denounce the choices that modern women were making, specifically by juxtaposing the new woman against the acclaimed true woman of the 19th century. To understand the new woman debate, we must understand the true woman. The true woman was a 19th century stereotype of a submissive, quiet, chaste, and pious woman held up as a model behavior for all women. Rhetorically, commentators on womanhood in the 19th century lumped all women together, and all women were expected to follow the same rules with no room for variation. This rhetorical strategy in creating the stereotype of the true woman trickled over into the new woman debate, as this debate was a continuation of the 19th century fixation on women's ideal roles, behaviors, and purposes. In the new woman debate, writers lumped all modern women together under the label new woman and often made comparisons between old womanhood and new womanhood. Thus, the way that opponents of modern womanhood would argue against women's new choices was that they would often derogate modern women by comparing the new woman to the true woman. Opponents were mainly concerned about the ramifications of modern women's behaviors in three areas, marriage, motherhood, and morality. The primary fear was that women would abandon traditional femininity in pursuit of becoming more like men, therefore not marrying or having children, leading to a societal crisis. But the term new woman was used almost exclusively amongst opponents of modern womanhood. Feminists of the time were not really interested in using the term because it did not serve to promote their mission of making more opportunities be made available to women. Because the term new woman is, by definition, a direct response to the old ways of womanhood, rhetoric that specifically used the phrase new woman tended to be derisively enacted against modern women. The rhetoric of the new woman also traveled into the art world where the association between the new woman and the American Girl icons on the magazine covers might not also be as accurate as scholars previously believed. For example, many people associated the new woman with the Gibson Girl, created and made popular by Charles Dana Gibson. 
For the most part, Gibson's New Woman drawings offered a benign and harmless representation of a modern woman who was bold, beautiful, and confident, but did not really pose a threat to the established order on gender. Gibson often drew her playing sports or flirting with men, but seldom ever in the workplace or in a college setting. Thus, Gibson's stereotype of the new woman did not represent the conglomerate of new choices that women were making. In terms of limitations with my project, I only studied argumentative prose from magazines and newspapers and not literature or poetry that described the new woman. In addition, many of the texts that I studied did not convey the variations in race, region, or socioeconomic backgrounds of the many modern women across the country. Also, I only had access to these articles from research databases, so the collections made available through the databases may not include all the material that discusses the new woman. Further rhetorical research must be done to understand the identity of the new woman from every angle. To conclude, scholars have only studied the new woman debate through the lens of feminist progress, an approach that ignores the argumentative intentions of the writers at the time. This approach views the new woman as more of a positive emblem of gender reform, which is not how the writers who constructed the new woman saw her. Taking a rhetorical approach to analyzing these debates helps us to understand how stereotypes are fashioned as arguments against gender reform relative to the time of the debate. In the same way that feminist rhetorical scholars dissect and analyze women's arguments, further rhetorical research must be done to dissect and analyze the underlying cultural constructs on gender that influence the efficacy of women's messages, and this can be done by further researching the rhetoric of those resistant to gender reform as in the New Woman debate. Thank you.